where we're going to start. Ecclesiastes chapter number 6. And then we're going to be turning to some other scriptures. Uh, but this is just a simple illustration of what we need and what we need to be reminded of each and every day. So if you found your place, we'll stand together for the reading of God's precious word. Ecclesiastes chapter number 6, let's look at verse number 1. Now Solomon said, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men. Sounds like today's news, doesn't it? A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. If a man beget a hundred children, and live many years, so that the days of his years be many, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he hath no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. Solomon is building a foundation. For he cometh in with vanity and departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Boy, it's heartbreaking. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun nor known anything. This hath more rest than the other. Yea, though he live a thousand years twice told, yet hath he seen no good. Do not all go to one place. All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. For what hath the wise man more than the fool? What hath the poor that knoweth to walk before the living. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. That which, he, that which hath been is named already. It is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. Seeing there be many things that increase vanity, what is man the better? How can it possibly help? For who knoweth what is good for man in this life? All the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? I want to really deal with verse 12 about man's life being a shadow or a a place where someone else stands in the shadow and hopefully watches over because Solomon realizes everything I've tried has turned out to be vanity. It hasn't really made anything special for me because he's told us in, in the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, I've already tried everything under the sun and it proffered me nothing. So let's look at this and let's pray together that the Lord would help us. I want to use this thought tonight, someone standing in the shadows. Someone standing in the shadows. Heavenly Father, thank you this wonderful day. We thank you for those who's on our prayer list. Dear God, that we might bring them to you daily and ask your blessings upon their families, their home, uh, Lord, may you really, truly visit these that are suffering with pain and discomfort. We pray tonight for Brother Ronnie, Brother Bobby, and uh, Brother Gary still got some tests coming forward. I pray, dear God, that all these things will work out to the glory of God. And we pray for Sister Emma as she's dealing with uh, these issues now with Brother Bobby. So, Lord, we need your help. We implore your blessings upon those that are hurting uh, in the mental capacity as well as the physical. So help us, oh God, as we live in these last days, as we prepare our hearts and our minds 
to please you and to seek you with all of our heart. And we're so glad that you're not far off. You're absolutely watching everything that we do, even if you're standing in the shadows, not to be seen, but to watch over all things that are absolutely going on, whether in the church or out of the church. Thank you for your help. I pray tonight in Jesus' name for your direction and your leadership. Help us, please. We humbly pray. For we ask it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your standing. The shadows represents darkness, which darkness normally brings fear. We don't feel comfortable in the darkest hours because fear brings uncertainty and can bring discouragement. Now, the, the shadow I'm talking about is not only physical, it could be mental, it could be spiritual. Something that seems to be fighting against forces. We know according to Ephesians chapter 6 that the devil is trying to rule the rulers of darkness. And as you know, he's doing a great job destroying lives, families, marriages, uh, taking away our teenagers. And uh, it appears to me he's almost running the public school system, trying to teach them things that are not so much as history, but more alternative lifestyles than the things that's going to help them uh, to get by in this life. So schools have really went off the rail as far as I'm concerned, but we do pray for those who stick with the stuff, stay with the truths, because this is what our next generation, they need something that's real and truthful. Uh, it's uncovering sometimes, not knowing the things that are just outside our realm, whether it be something hiding in the shadows or something that's unknown or unseen. Sometimes our understanding that we view may be a form of shadow because something's bothering me, something I sense, but I can't see it. I, I can't put my finger on it, but there's, there's something there. And I'm going to give you an illustration. How many times has someone ever asked you, are you all right? Well, yeah. Well, you seem to be discontent or bothered. Is there something wrong? Well, yeah, but I really don't know what it is. Uh, I feel discouraged, but I don't know anything as far as news that has discouraged me, but I just feel something's not right. Sometimes we all go through that, and we can't put our fingers on it, but we know something, something seems off a little bit. It can bring much discomfort because we're maybe just not sure what's, what's taking place. Have you ever just not felt good and really don't know why? Uh, you're not in pain. You're not physically, you haven't heard any real sad news, but yet you're just feeling off. Something doesn't sense right. But we know someone is standing in our shadows watching us until it's time for him to make himself known. I want to give you four people tonight. That's why we're going to be turning. So listening to verse 12, I want to read it again, then let's turn to Mark chapter 6. He said, for who knoweth what is good? Well, we think we do. Uh, now watch, for man in this life, all the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow that's seen and known and yet not seen and unknown. And then he said, for who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? All right, let's take our Bibles and turn to Mark chapter number 6. And let's look at verse 45, if you would, please. Verse 45, this is a time where our disciples have been sent on ahead of our Lord to go ahead and prepare, but the Lord didn't just send them out. He sent them alone. He did not go. Let's look at our reading in verse 45. And straightway he constrained, that word also means persuaded, his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, 
while he sent away the people. So he was going to deal with the crowds, but he said, you get in the boat and you go to the other side. How many knows and are assured of that when God says something, it happens? So what I read is that boat is going to the other side. It don't matter if it's carrying water or going as a submarine. When he says to the fig tree, be thou cursed, it was. His word is with power and authority. Now watch this. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. So he did not immediately go to meet with his disciples. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea. So however long the Sea of Galilee was, they were about halfway, and our Lord was standing in the shadows watching. Watch this. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. Look at your verse. And he saw them. Look what they were doing. The wind was contrary unto them, and about the fourth watch of the night, now watch this, he cometh unto them. Now the fourth watch of the night we know is somewhere between three and six in the early hours of the morning. Walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. In the shadows, our Lord watches when there's troubles going on. Whether it's you getting a phone call of unkind news, whether you've heard a particular news from a doctor, uh, our Lord is always so close. Now watch. For they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. So number one, the disciples in the storm, he seen them in distress. The scripture says they were toiling in rowing. And then the second thing, it looked like a disaster to them because it also says in verse 48 that the winds were contrary. What that simply means, they're trying to get across and however two or three mile an hour they were trying to do, the wind was keeping them from going anywhere. So they were toiling and rowing and literally going nowhere and they were literally, I guess, at their very wit's end and were trying to get to the other side but were making no headway. We're going nowhere. So we see their distress from their rowing. We see the, disa the disaster that was about to take place, the winds. And listen, the winds are always blowing against our lives. The winds are always blowing against the church, trying to keep the church from going forward. And then we've seen the darkest hour of their life. It said it was the fourth watch. And our Lord was standing on land watching the whole thing. Remember, he sent the crowd away, and then he went up into the mountain to pray. And then it said when they were in the midst of it, he seen them. And then he just casually finished his prayer and started heading that way. I don't know about you, but if I seen a man walking on the sea, I don't know if I'd be afraid or happy because it's in one respect the trouble we're doing with all our efforts as fishermen, we're not doing well and we're not going to make it to the other side. But then our Lord comes walking as if he would just pass them by. And they were afraid. They called out to him and he said, basically, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. In other words, I've got this. I've come out here just for you. I was standing in the shadows watching, and now I want to come and not only help you to support you, but to take care of you. So the disciples in a storm was needing somebody, not only standing in the shadows and watching, but somebody to come to their aid. All right, let's go to Luke chapter number 24, if you would please. Luke chapter 24. 
In Luke chapter 24, let's do our scripture reading, starting at verse 13. Luke 24, verse 13. The Bible said, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score four longs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. The Lord had been crucified. It's already been three days, and they were so hoping to, uh, to see him again. But now, I guess the truth as they know it has set in. The Bible said, And it came to pass that while they communed together, because remember, somebody was following in the shadows, watching and listening. Watch this. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden or literally covered that they could not recognize him and that they should not know him. He didn't want to appear as the risen Savior just yet. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? I began to ask myself the question, was he following all the way from Jerusalem, just listening and watching their, their mannerisms and their character and their sadness? So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they turn and there he is, but not as the Savior that they seen crucified, and one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and, and hast not known the things which have come to pass there in these days? Where have you been? How could you not know what's taking place? And he said unto them, I like this, what things? Can you see our Lord saying, I want to hear more about what has caused you to be so sad? They said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was, which was a prophet mighty indeed and, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Now here's the thing I want to grab your attention. Watch this. But we trusted. That word also is we believed, we were sure, we were convinced. Now watch that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Now, they've already heard about Mary and some of the others that have already seen Christ. Now watch this. Uh, yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that, uh, that uh, they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Skip down to verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now, he basically has given them some Old Testament scripture. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory all right if you would look to verse 36 if you would please and as they thus spake jesus himself stood in the midst and uh, of them and said unto them peace be unto you now already they've already stopped for bread he was going to leave but they really compelled him please stay and they went and as the uh resources would they would uh, as even a stranger, they'd wash his feet for the traveling on the road, and they would set a food before him. So everything now is going as if they would spend the night, he would rest, and then be on his way the next day. Well, then they no doubt ask a visitor to ask God's blessings upon the food. And the Bible said when he did, they seen his hands and his feet and realized, oh, my. And then the Bible tells us, he literally left right out of their presence. Uh, let me back up to verse 30. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, and brake, and gave to them, and then. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. 
and he vanished out of their sight. Verse 36, he, now they went back to Jerusalem. He comes into their, their uh, place of, of where they were hiding. So now we've seen the disciples in the storm, and now we wanted to visit the two men on the way to Emmaus. They were in despair because verse 14, they begin to discuss about the crucifixion. One of the worst things they expected to happen to not only the king of the Jews, but their Messiah. There was despair. There was despondency. He said, what is this conversation that you're so sad? Well, everything they thought Christ was, their hopes were literally dashed. They didn't have any more ideas but they didn't even give the third day a chance. Remember, they said, and today is the third day. Well, he kept telling them that I will rise on the third day. So they were in despair. They were very despondent by their countenance. And then they were discussing the death of their master. They said in verse 21, we trusted him. We knew for a fact he was the one who was going to set Israel free we were going to be not oppressed anymore from the Roman government. We just knew well, how quick your joy and happiness can turn to sorrow. But there was somebody already standing in the shadows, watching and listening. How often is he standing in the shadows of our homes, listening, watching us complain and whine and fret and fearful, and sometimes, like there, he's not making himself known. But if we would get in the Word of God, he would reveal himself through Scripture. He's always there, standing in the shadows. All right, let's go to John's Gospel, if you would, please. We've seen the disciples in the storm. We've seen the two men on the way to Emmaus. Now, John chapter 20, if you would, please. Let's look at verse 18, if you would. John chapter 20, verse 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Church, did, did they need to see the nail prints? Did they need to see? But the Lord said, I just want you to know that I'm not a spirit. It is me. Look and be assured. And of course, for Thomas, Thomas needed more than just the sight. He needed to touch it. Now watch this. He said, then said, verse 21, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. It appears his peace was not coming through. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retained, they are retained. Now the disciples are met after the resurrection. Here in John chapter 20, we know there's divisions. Uh, Mary said, I've seen him, he's talked with me. The men from Emmaus have come and said, we have seen him, he was with us. That's why we came back in the middle of the night. And then all of a sudden, while their fears and problems were associated, he stands right in the midst. Now, how long had he been standing in the shadows, listening and seeing how the people would respond to the news of the two men from Emmaus? We've seen the Lord. Well, they wasn't too excited because two times he had to say, Peace be unto you. I don't know if they were in shock. Were they saying, I don't know if my eyes are really seeing the risen Savior. But our Lord has made himself seen on many wonderful occasions. And in this time, he finds divisions. 
Some said, well, Mary said she's seen them. The Emmaus disciples said, we've seen them. So now it was causing a division in the little group that was called the church, uh, even before it came into being. So the disciples were trying to figure out, Mary said this, someone else said this. Peter had even seen him on another occasion. So all these things were like, well, how is it that some people are sinning and some are not? So their divisions turned to discouragement. They were hiding for fear of the Jews, as verse 19 tells us, and they literally felt like they were deserted. He's not here. We need him now. We don't know where to go now. He's been taken. He's been crucified. Now we don't know, are we to carry on? Are we to go forward? We we're literally feel like he's just deserted us. But I want you to notice one thing. Our Lord is standing in the shadows, watching, listening. How you represent me. Many times we think when we're alone, we think we're really alone. But someone is standing not far off. The precious work of God is his way to listen, his way to pay attention. And sometimes I just wish that he would appear to us and just reprimand us for like, where is your faith? Oh, ye of little faith. The disciples after the resurrection needed something really special. And our Lord literally appeared right in their midst. When division was coming, he was there to bring peace and contentment and happiness. All right, let's look at our last one. Acts chapter number 9, if you would please. Acts chapter number 9. Here in Acts chapter 9, we know this is the conversion of the uh, tyrant by the name of Paul. A very educated, knowledgeable man following the precepts of the Pharisees and thinking he's honoring God by trying to get rid of these followers of this man they call Christ. And he feels that he's doing honorable things. We know he was standing and given consent when Deacon Stephen was stoned. And they even laid Stephen's clothes at the feet of this man named Saul. So he no doubt seen Stephen even praying for this crowd, kind of like our Lord did. Uh, Stephen said that he seen the Lord standing, and he asked that their sin be not laid to their charge. All right, look in verse 1. And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of this way, of this way as in believers, disciples, followers, if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And many times, if somebody they were looking for gave them problems and issues, they would take their lives and bring their bodies back. So he was feeling, he was doing God a wonderful justice. So we've seen the disciples in the storm and someone standing in the shadows. We see two men on the way to Emmaus with broken hearts and someone following closely in the shadows. Then the disciples after the resurrection trying to figure out where we're going, what we're going to do, what is our next plan of action. Somebody appears after standing in the shadows. And then we find Saul on his way to Damascus to try to honor God and get these people off the society road, put them in prison, and try to shut down this following. Well, there in verse 1 and verse 2, we see there was disorder. Why? Because he brought threatenings and slaughter. He had absolutely wanted to kill everyone that was called a follower. So the disorder continued, and then he had a form of dominion. I am going after them. I will not only arrest them, men or women, but I'm going to bring them back to Jerusalem so we can make a real spectacle of all this following that we're going to put a stop to. Well, one thing about verse 2, we see a tremendous displeasure. And verse 2 said they, 
and he desired of the high priest letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of the way, man or woman, that he would get to bring them handcuffed, tied, bound, all the way back to Jerusalem. Well, somebody met somebody standing in the shadows on the way to Damascus to do a, an honorable job before God. And on his way, the somebody that was standing in the shadows decided to make himself known. We know that he was literally shocked and awed and thrown off his horse, began to eat the dust of humiliation, how this could happen to somebody in my position. But then somebody spoke to him. Somebody said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, it's not easy for you to kick against the prick that's causing havoc to my people. So understandably, Paul was trying his best. He couldn't see this person, but he heard a voice that was so tremendous in its efforts that the first thing he said was, Lord, Lord, I didn't think you believed, Paul, and all it take was you falling off your horse, hearing a voice that you cannot see, and now all of a sudden, you feel like you know him on a personal mission. Well, God began to speak to him and told him that he would do great and mighty things, but he also told him through Ananias, you're going to be a lot of, a lot of suffering is going to come through you uh, for the gospel's sake. So we understand that Ananias was told, the Lord, look in verse 15, and I'm fixing to close, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now watch this. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. All through his wonderful ministry, our Lord was standing in the shadows. They were having many conversations, whether it was at a shipwreck or at a whipping. God was always telling him what his next plan of action was. So there was great things taking place, and the man who was Saul not only became Paul, but he became the Apostle Paul. And a man with somebody that he knew standing in the shadows had his back, and even for the point of a viper biting him on the hand, which he should have died, our Lord was standing in the shadows watching and literally, the gospel was proclaimed everywhere. Churches sprang up everywhere. The gospel was preached. He worked so feverishly in the book of Acts, trying to bring Jew and Gentile together for churches. We've already went through the book of Acts uh, on our Wednesday night studies. And he tried so feverishly to win his people, the Jews, and yet proclaim the gospel to the Gentiles. It wasn't an easy thing for them to come under Judaism and try to get under where the gospel was being presented. So it was a terrible time as far as the church is trying to coexist. Shadows. God changes shadows into light when he is seen. There is no fear nor worry in the light. There is no need to fear because of the light. He reveals truth and understanding even in our darkest hours of our Christian life. Christ is always there watching and listening in the shadows. We think our Lord is so far away. And there's so many of us, he, he can't keep an eye on everybody. Amen. He has the ability to know. Can I go a little further? He knows your intimate thoughts that you haven't even spoken. He knows the desire of your heart. Standing in the shadows, and does he let darkness come in our lives? Yes. Does he, lay it, does he allow sorrow and pain to come in our lives? Yes, because he knows he's got something better coming. And we always know there's something good in this. I don't see it yet, but there's something good that's going to come out of this. So we thank God even when the shadows 
or fearful and worrisome, we thank God because somebody sees everything that I'm facing and everything I'm going through. Whether it's a time of bad news, whether it's something you've experienced, something you're fixing to go through, there's three classes of people. There's people who are coming out of a storm. There's another class of people who literally is going into the storm. And there are those who are waiting their turn because every mountain has valleys, but a valley only exists between two mountains. So it's good to re literally sing and rejoice from the joy of the Lord. Better remember the valley, you're going to forget all about your joy because now it's woe is me, Lord help us. Standing in the shadows, watching and expecting us to have the faith to stand steadfast and sure. I've often thought to myself, Deacon Stephen was just the beginning of his ministry. And right in the ministry, because they sought for a deacon and they didn't have any problems literally finding Stephen to be one of those first deacons. And right at the beginning of his ministry, he gets taken out. Another shadow, another sorrow. But he was, he was getting ready. He was preparing, and no doubt, not only a gospel preacher, but he would have been a great deacon to help the church. But Stephen didn't get to get good and started. So what little he had, our testimony of Stephen is always that he prayed for his persecutors. He did a great mighty act. Let's thank our Lord for even the times of darkness and shadows and sorrows because somebody is standing in the midst watching. Heavenly Father, we thank you this wonderful day. It's been a great day in the house of our God. We've been so privileged to honor our mothers today and Lord to realize the things that we yet have faced. But boy, when it's our turn, we are so assured that you'll be there in our midst, watching and listening and preparing us. Hopefully that we'll please you and honor you with that which we are about to face. Sometimes it's so easy to just feel overwhelmed, overtaken. Uh, how can I go on? Uh, I just don't need another thing to happen. And yet if it does, you are so close by watching and listening. Oh, I hope we can pray and sense your presence and feel that it's not all about us. It's about the gospel presentation going forward. God in heaven, I pray you will help us not only to pass out tracts, but to be a witness and a testimony to a lost and dying world. God, put people in our pathways that will share something that may be exactly what they're looking for. So thank you, our God, for your kindness and love and help us. As we go into the shadows of life, there'll be a time, no doubt, of fear and uncertainty. But I pray you'll help us to remember someone is watching. And Lord, that someone is always you. Thank you for being there. And I pray through these examples we might be encouraged. Forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings. Bless this wonderful night together in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.